Dude, is the fan on? You all right? It's so hot. Why don't you turn on the AC? I haven't put it in yet. Well, why haven't you done that? Because I've got a better idea! By sacrificing this ice cube, this glass of ice water, and this empty box of Molson ice, I summon the sacred beast of air conditioning! It is I, the sacred beast of air conditioning! Oh great god, grant me AC! Just put the AC in yourself, you lazy jerk-off! Good afternoon, jank enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. I can hear you clacking away at your keyboards now, mere seconds into the video, demanding I get off my toned and luscious cheeks and get to work on one of the many archetypes I haven't already looked at. Joseph, there's no Aramage TMT! Joseph, where's the Ritual Beast video? Joseph, when are you going to perfect Tamur Reclaim? Well, listen up, chumps. Above all else, I serve the algorithm. And as people purchase the Sacred Beast structure deck, they're going to be desperate to find a way to play these unplayable chonkers. And I think I've found one. Consider the last video a tech demo for today's deck, Sacred Beasts. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll convince Konami to release their super secret GX Hortaki retrain. So, here's the list, and I am so sorry to those of you building on a budget, you do have to play Magician Souls. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygopro.deck.com. Now let's settle in with Sacred Beasts. The Sacred Beasts are a series of god card retrains for the GX era. Just like how GX is a cynical cash grab responsible for some of the worst arcs in the series, the Sacred Beasts are some of the first in a now storied tradition of printing nostalgia bait. Oh, quiet down in the comments! According to my analytics, none of you were even born when DM was airing. Anyway, in order to make these laughable losers playable after their near-upset last structure deck poll, Konami printed a series of spells, traps, and monster support to enable their Evangelionian frames. The new support is just about as pushed as you'd see on a custom card subreddit, but unfortunately, it still isn't likely to catapult these chonkers to playability. That is... not without the aid of a master deck builder, of course. I think this is about the best you're going to get out of the new decks. It focuses on a single beast, Hamon, who also happens to be both the best in a vacuum and has the best support spell. The whole list is raw synergy. Souls can pop the continuous spells after you've already gotten value or before you add them back with 7th. Exodius resolves the ever-present issue of running out of beasts or lacking damage to close the game. And Deck Lockdown serves a fantastic role as an extremely targeted floodgate, which also happens to be a continuous spell. And outside of Poisonous Winds, there aren't many of those in the game. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, three Hamon, Lord of Striking Thunder! Next is three Dark Summoning Beast, who's fantastic outside of his battle restriction. After that is three Dark Beckoning Beast, who makes the deck tick, and three Chaos Summoning Beast, your Hamon Summoner and Paradise Searcher. After that is three Magician Souls and its target, two Exodius, whose stat line is perfect for our pal Gustav. For spells, we're on three Seven Spirit Gates, three Cerulean Skyfire, my second favorite Skyfire, three Allure of Darkness, three Called By, three Deck Lockdown, two Fallen Paradise, an Upstart, and a Foolish Burial. For traps, we're on three Infip and a Skill Drain. In the extra, we're on a bunch of beefy boys. Leva, Sky Palace, Dora, and Gustav, followed by Boral Sword, Nightmare's Unicorn, Phoenix, and Cerberus, Borg, Mask, Linkaribo, Anima, Clara, and Rushka, and realistically, the only one you're ever going to go into, two copies of Almirage. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Generator, and while one of the cards in our opponent's opener is setting off some alarm bells, 
This should be a fantastic opportunity to showcase just what this deck is capable of. We've drawn fantastically, and we're going first. We're going to leave with a copy of Seven Spirit Gates Unleashed that's going to add a Chaos Summoning Beast to hand. We'll normal summon a copy of Dark Beckoning Beast in order to get a Hemon to our grip before using our extra normal on Chaos Summoning and its effect to special the Hemon. We'll activate Chaos Summoning's effect to get a Fallen Paradise to hand before Link Summoning an Almirage and using Seven Spirit Gates Unleashed to bring back a Dark Summoning Beast that we pitch. We'll go into a second Hemon, activate Dark's effect to get the third to hand, then activate Fallen Paradise, fire that sucker off, ooh, and find ourselves a copy of Deck Lockdown. We'll set it and Twin Surly and Skyfires before passing it back to our opponent. Good luck. For turn, they draw a copy of Lopter. Okay, they haven't completely bricked. They're going to normal summon a copy of Lopter, activate stage, we'll negate the effect of stage. Right, yes, that's how that works. Okay, afterwards, they're going to be able to get off a copy of Awakens just because we mismanage our Cerulean, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. We'll activate Fallen Paradise here, then they will activate Har. We'll send this copy of Exodius to the graveyard before banishing our second copy with Allure. We'll activate Upstart Goblin and normal summon a copy of Dark Beckoning Beast. We are just getting material on board. We're going to summon, via its own effect, this copy of Haman before activating another copy of Cerulean Skyfire, bringing back a Dark Beckoning and going into Boral Sword. Finally, we have enough attack to get over the Har, so we'll do so with the Boral Sword, and from this position we can't possibly lose. We'll do a thousand with the effect of Haman, putting our opponent low enough that we can kill them with the other direct. Our second match is up against Chaos Dragon. This has been an extremely exciting deck to see flourish in the wake of Toon Chaos's release, but it's still the first week. As a result, people aren't particularly practiced in the combos. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Chaos Space, adding a White Dragon Wifer Burster to hand. They'll special summon that and a copy of Striker Dragon, triggering the effect of White and Striker in sequence, adding a Black and a Boot Sector Launch to hand. Next, they'll special summon a copy of Black, activate the Graveyard Effect of Chaos Space, and use Boot Sector Launch's effect to summon a Tracer from hand. They'll activate Tracer's effect, destroying the Boot Sector Launch to get a copy of Silver Rocket from deck, to go into a copy of Dillingerous, Savage with a one mat attached, and a pass? Feel like they could have done more. We're going to lead with a copy of Dark Beckoning Beast. Afterwards, we're going to activate this effect of Seven Spirit Gates. It gets Ash, but it remains on field. We'll normal summon a copy of Chaos and activate Foolish Burial in order to send a copy of Dark. We'll use Dark's effect later in the turn. We don't want to lock ourselves out of the battle phase. We'll use Chaosus to get the Haman out of our hand. We'll activate Seven Spirit Gates now that we have a Haman to get back this copy of Skyfire that we discarded. We'll activate Fallen Paradise, proceed to battle phase, and 4,000 is larger than 3,500. Now that we're safely out of the battle, we'll activate Cerulean Skyfire and Dark's effect to get another copy of Haman, finally ending on a Link Summoned Mirage. Now this does give our opponent a fantastic target for Dillingerous, but no big deal, we can just activate its effect. Okay, our opponent will lead with a copy of Monster Reborn, and we will negate it! Ha <laughs> ha! Skyfire! They'll go into a copy of Safer to use its effect to get a copy of White Dragon Wyvern Burster, and Safer's second to put back this copy of Borload. They're going to bring back the Tracer, activate Tracer's effect in order to summon a copy of Recharger from deck. They'll go into Savage, but with no links in Graveyard, that card sucks. Okay, we should be able to win from here. We'll use Unleash to get a copy of Dark Beckoning. We'll activate Fallen Paradise and a second copy of Seven Spirit Gates. We'll activate our Extra Normal to get a copy of Chaos Summoning Beast onto our side of the field, tack it out for Haman, and go to Battle Phase. We'll attack, deal a thousand. They'll activate the effect of Recharger to bring back this copy of DMD in defense position. No big deal. We're still doing a thousand every attack, which is more than enough to put together lethal. So, it's time for game three, and you know what that means. A best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Synchro Eldlich which is miserable, but we could do it. We're going first, and we have to draw something fantastic off this allure. Ooh, Dark Beckoning Beast fits the bill. We'll activate its effect and eat an infinite impermanence. That's just about the worst case scenario. It needs to remain on field to get our extra normal summon, so we can't even manage a Haman. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Upstart Goblin. Next, they'll activate the effect of Magician Souls, and I can tell this game is already over. However, I refuse to concede. I must get ad revenue. They're going to set a copy of Conquistador before... Ooh, Ooh, drawing into a tuning! How about that? Okay, stop me if you've seen this line before. They're going to use Halka Fibrax to get a Jet Synchron from deck, followed by a Link Cross summoning two tokens. Afterwards, they're going to Synchro summon a copy of Formula Synchron, draw a card, and Synchro summon a copy of Martial Metal Marcher. That's going to bring back the Formula Synchron. After that, they're going to Link summon a copy of Borg and a Dawn. Now, they do have the 001 in hand, but they can still cosplay 001 by activating Jet Synchron's graveyard effect. We have the called for that, but it's a little too little too late. They're going to go into one Omni Negate. Uh, uh. Uh, which is probably still enough to win the game. Here comes Savage. It'll have a Dawn equipped. O-Line is going to put a token on their side of the field. They're going to do, what, 40-50 to me? And I have exactly one draw to get out of this. They'll activate Haketo at end step, setting a copy of White and passing turn. For turn we draw... Okay, this could do it. We'll lead with a copy of Souls. Uh, that's going to fiend a copy of Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill from our opponent. Fantastic. Next we'll activate Skyfire. That fiends the Boar Load. Now we'll activate Chaos Summoning Beast and get Hamon! Oh, right. Okay, well, they also have the spot removal, I suppose. However, their zone placement leaves a lot to be desired. We're going to go into a relinquished anima and take our opponent's monster. Unfortunately, it it doesn't beat over Borolode Savage Dragon, so 
we are still losing this game. They're going to normal summon a copy of Magician's Souls and ugh, send the card equipped to Savage. Why are you allowed to do that? Afterwards, going to set a copy of Haketo with Elixir of White Destiny's effect and no longer bound by Called by the Grave, they can go into a Hauka Fibrax with a Jet Synchron. I've seen enough. So it's time for game two and... Alright, hands are allowed to look bad in this deck. You draw too many cards for it to matter. We're going to lead with a copy of Lure of Darkness drawing off the top. See, what did I tell you? A copy of Seven Spirit Gates. It'll get ashed, but no big deal. It's still on the field. We'll activate Upstart Goblin. Ooh, deck lockdown is pretty good. We're going to send a copy of Dark. We're going to activate its effect for a copy of Haman, then normal summon a copy of Chaos Summoning Beast to get that Haman to our side of the field. We'll activate Seven Spirit Gates to bring back this copy of Dark and activate its effect to get a second Haman before activating the Graveyard Effect of Dark to get the third, the Graveyard Effect of Chaos to get the Fallen Paradise, and Fallen Paradise's effect to draw a couple of cards. Okay, deck lockdown might actually let us walk with it. We'll pass to our opponent who draws for turn a Jet Synchron. Why am I not surprised? No big deal, we do have the Called by the Grave, I just want to be mad about it. Our opponent's going to activate Haketo at end step for a copy of Eldlixer of White Destiny, but no big deal, they can't summon from deck. We're going to start with Fallen Paradise's effect activation before normal summoning a copy of Chaos and going into our third Haman. Next, we'll special summon a copy of Exodius so we can make Gustav Max and do 2,000 to our opponent, ending on a copy of Liba. We'll go to Battle Phase and they'll trigger the effect of Karibo so that Liba goes to zero. We can still get in for lethal. So it's time for that all-important Game 3 and can you not draw Jet Synchron one time? Oh, God. Well, unsurprisingly, we're going to live or die based off the result of these allures. Let's see what our opponent can set up. They're going to leave with a copy of Tuning, sending from the deck to the graveyard a copy of Upstart. They'll go into Jet Synchron and activate Jet Synchron's graveyard effect. This triggers the effect of the O-Line, which unfortunately for them they drew. They'll activate Halka Fibrax's effect for a 001. Afterwards, they'll link summon a copy of Link Cross and get two level 1 tokens to their side of the field. From here, they will perform a Link Summon of a Formula Synchron, which draws off the top. Oh, a Cursed Eldland! Fantastic! They'll use its effect to get a copy of the Big Golden Boy to hand before going into a Martial Metal Marcher, bringing back the Formula Synchron, Link Summoning a copy of Barricade Borg, activating its effect to get the Big Golden Boy into the graveyard, and activating the effect of Aurorodon, getting three tokens, and the Z 001 from the grave. From here, they have the appropriate star line to go into a copy of Herald of the Arclight, and what do you know, a copy of Savage Dragon with a 2 equipped as well. This is... Yeah, just about as bad as it could possibly get. They'll trigger the effect of Cursed Eldland at an end step, activate the effect of Conquistador in order to reset a copy of Scarlet Sanguine. For turn, we draw a Fallen Paradise. Not good. We'll activate the Lure of Darkness and, ooh, Infip. We'll activate it on the Herald. It doesn't fiend and negate, so we can special summon this copy of Magician Souls. We'll activate its effect. It fiends an Ash. Okay, this Allure has to do it. We'll activate Allure. We draw off the top. Pretty much nothing. We'll activate Dark Summoning Beast's effect, it gets boar loaded, of course, and we'll activate its second effect to get a Haman to hand, but with no extra summon, we'll activate Skyfire and resign ourselves to our fate. So we're back with the deck, and while unsurprisingly it lost to Lich, Hamon is still plenty electrifying. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, Hamon is a surprisingly difficult dude to deal with. Fallen Paradise means he's nearly impossible to kill outside of battle, and like, Good luck killing this guy in battle. Two, Cerulean Skyfire and Deck Lockdown are insane. They can be popped for souls and then added back for more advantage, and the former isn't mandatory, so if your opponent is hoping to spike MSTs to out Lockdown, the onus is on you to lose. Three, there is no feeling on Earth more satisfying than overlaying two ancient Egyptian deities for a gun. And the cons. One, Access code complicates things. It's hard to make under deck lockdown, but uh, it does out the entire board by itself. First it pops Paradise, then it pops Hamon. Two, the deck doesn't play well through infinite impermanence. You kind of need the extra normal and the resolution of Dark Beckoning Beast's effect to go anywhere. And three, the ceiling is just pretty low on your plays. Yes, you can set up a best case lock of a big chonker and a floodgate or two, but most reasonable decks can play through that and more and that's the best you can manage. All in all, I don't think Sacred Beasts are likely to see much competitive success, even after the support, but I do think this is their best shell yet. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons, MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Alex Perea, Candyman, Crispy, Mika Reichman, Sir Tachyon, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, 
Andrew Horseman, Linderman, Austin Zell, Chad Bortz, Preston Case in the fourth, Moira Brownwolf, Angry Bread, Lucky Number Five, Amid Elefondi, Nick Extreme Ninety Nine, Muno Arashi, Jason Leonard, Andrew Boyko, Dunkoro, Nick Dolores, Marty Caldwell, Blue Boy, Shane Meadow Edits Pranga, David Daniels, Red Eyes, Arkand, Jose Luis Cortez, Yuri is Best, Mike Carlotti, Meds for Feds, Josh, CJ Alex, Darcy Tevs, Mitchell Cook, Sam Soon, Karakaze, Chorps Away, Haruf, Jane Lenya, Lucas Hansen, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Lavender Lemonade, Zach McKee, Gustavo Sicon, Siberian Rabbit, Pro FP Two, Gamer Games, Michael Oskvark, Dan the Man Hoban, Billy Williams, Connor Kid, Dive Missile, This Machine Two Three Seven, Bleb, Lake Roots. Standards Objective, Jeff Leonard, Emperor Stove, TJ Steakhouse, Pro Yugi Dad, Picnic Blasted, Lawrence, Gel Du Radeau, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fang Wong, Donnie Fillerup, Isaac Jackson, Second, Lucas Geertis, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Andrew Benson, Distrin, and this last person I can't pronounce. As always, if you want to be part of the process, please consider subscribing. And if you want to watch me play these decks on stream, follow me on Twitch as well. See you next time.